Hello. Now that the Mesoamerican calendar database is pretty much built, I'm using it to match up contemporary dates with their signs in the Aztec calendar. So January 17th, 2023 corresponds to Nawi Kiawit, for rain, whose numerical sign and calendar day appear in this display. This is just a draft, but I wanted to show some important features in the direction for this um, project. The, this is the fourth day within this 13-day cycle of Se Cosca Cuauhti, one vulture. So this is the fourth day within that 13-day period. And as both the fourth lord of day, Tornatiu, it represents the sun, but he is also the day, uh, lord of the day of storm, or day of rain. So he's appearing here twice and I don't want to do that. He should appear only once in this display. We also see Tlaxolteotl as the seventh lady of the night and Xordot, the patron of the 13-day calendar. We even have a Maya uh, figure here, but this glyph will be a pro uh, subject for a future video. Right now, I'd like to look at the code by which to reorganize and ensure that the figures appear just once as necessary for the full display. So this is the main query by which I'll be getting all my content from the database. And you can see that I'm getting it all in one go. I know it's not always the, uh, it's not the ideal practice, but because it's such a small database, I feel confident with that I can get this in a single query. And you can see that everything is joining with each other. So, uh, and in some cases coming from the same table multiple times. So I am casting aliases. We're getting uh, content from the same tables, but each time with uh, different names so that it prevents collision. With, when we start to process the content into the uh final display for this uh, for, for all this content. And the primary table is Tornali. These are the 20 days of the calendar. And I am joining on this uh, primary uh, table with other ta uh, with other tables such as Te Teo, or the, uh, the entities, the beings that are associated with the day names. And we have, for example, the ID for the uh, Tornali Teo, um, and this is joined with the ID on the uh, table itself. And we also do this for we're getting the uh, different um, values for the 13 day period the uh, position within the 13 day count the position within the nine nights we're getting uh, the same table multiple times but joining on each of the other tables so we have to disambiguate we have to clarify uh, what um, the different um, table instances and by uh, giving them different names. And the query method is going to take this query and produce all the content. The function Tlapoa is what converts these uh, figures into the uh, into the numbers. And now we're turning to the Nescayot uh, file. This is requiring the um, content and the query that I was showing you in the last uh, page. And we're getting the content and if it exists, we get the first element in it and we define our data. Otherwise, we throw in error statements. And to produce the images, I've uh, defined a function called Nelwat, which comes from the Nahuatl word meaning root. And this is a way of defining what l level of directory uh, that uh, we're going to find these images in. If a subdirectory is uh, included in the, fu in the function, then we uh, look for the image within that subdirectory and get the file name. And this is within a ternary statement saying that if this is true, then we return this value otherwise we do this other action instead and similarly with the file exists condition does this image exist and if so we're going to uh, create an html element to display the image otherwise it's just going to be a blank piece in the uh, in the code so coming back up to the top here, we're going to look at some of the uh, examples of the properties that were that are coming from the uh, that original query, such as the images for the day sign, the number, the Maya glyph, and so on. And because we're getting the same content from multiple instances of the Teteo uh, table, we have to disambiguate. We have to clarify uh, which one we're going to be using. What we see here are some of the numbers as they appear in the subdirectory, the numbers directory, and we see the uh, files for three and four. And likewise, for the Teteo, we're going to look at some samples within the Teteo subdirectory. And we see, for example, Chalchu Totolin, who is associated with uh, two of the major cycles. And because we were looking earlier at Tonatiu, the sun, we need to be sure that this image exists. And so we see that the file name Tonatiu.png occurs within the directory of Teteo. So that is what we have to pass in order to make sure that this image appears when 
when we start to display all this content on the uh, on the page. This is an array called Olochtit, which comes from the word for collections. So what's happening here is I am mapping out the collections by mani, which means to distribute. And this is a way of mapping out the different figures as they are going to appear in different levels of the cosmos. And you can see the properties associated with each of these levels. So I'm going to be getting uh, up to five, perhaps even six uh, different figures uh, that uh, could potentially appear. And each time I want to be sure that I am mapping out all the content associated with each of the figures. I'm saying that if the uh, the cosmic level has not yet been defined, let's create an array. Let's let's create this cosmic level and we begin to populate it with any of the uh, figures that are going to be associated with one level or another. We're going to see this in the next part of this video where I show the display. What we have here then is the deities, the, the figures are going to correspond to specific levels of the cosmos. And what is an important thing to do here is if this figure has not yet been uh, added to the level, let's go ahead and do that. Otherwise, if they already appear at this level, let's skip. This is my way of ensuring that we don't duplicate. There was that whole um, issue that I showed you in the first uh, part of this video where the sun was appearing twice. This is my way of saying if the sun already appears in this level of the cosmos, we don't need to show it again. Here I am mapping out the properties that are will be associated with each of the figures. So when we, we're not just getting the uh, figure for each of the cosmic levels. We're going to get all the other contents that we also want to display. And then this is a case sort. This is going to sort so that we create a hierarchy with the cosmic, the celestial, the heavenly levels at the top and the uh, underworld levels at the bottom and I'll show you what we how this appears in the next part. So here is the original code from which we will start to map out the uh, levels of the heavens that are, are represented in this uh, display as well as the corresponding figures that occur in each. We see for example uh, C3 which is Ilwikak which is the level of the heavens and this is where we find the sun Tornatiu and we have the name the image file as well as the uh, location which we're going to show in the uh, final part of this display. L likewise with level C5 Tlaltikpa standing upon the earth, where, where we find Tlaxolteot, the uh, figure of one of the uh, deities of fertility. We're also getting all the content. We're getting the ID for uh, each of the uh, associated with each of the deities. And uh, we uh, uniquely add one of the this uh, figure to each level of the cosmos so that uh, we avoid repetition. And that is exactly what we see here. We have um, the standing upon the earth Tlaltikpak. We have Miktlan, the land of the dead. And the figure that appears at this level is Sholot. And this is at level C8. Uh, so we are getting this content. And what we're going to do now is organize the levels of the cosmos into a meaningful vertical hierarchy so that we can see the figures as they should appear in the final display. So returning to the code, we're going to look at how to organize the content so that it appears in a meaningful hierarchy. Semanawak means the uh, cosmos, and we're going to organize this according to the levels that we have defined in that last part that I showed you in the code. Chaneke are the denizens, the homeowners that will occur at each level, and Itlaman are its parts. Teotokait is the name associated with each of the figures, and Nelwat, remember, is the way by which we generate the code to create the image sources. So the Tlaiskopintli is the image, and that is what we're going to display in this particular section of the code. So we will get the, uh, the image and its corresponding name. Tlampa is the Nahuatl name for the uh, realm in which it is si the, each figure is situated. And then realm is just an English translation. And now at last, the three images are appearing in their vertical hierarchy. So in Ilwikak, the level of the heavens, the worlds above, Tonatiu, appears just the one time instead of that duplication that we saw earlier. On the level of the earth, the surface, Tlatzolteot, dwells. And then finally in Mictlan, lurks Xolot. So we have this hierarchy of the three cosmic levels represented by the figures for today's sign. And in the next part of this progress of, of this video series, we'll be looking at the Maya signs and how I will be arranging them into the long count and other parts of the Mayan Solkin. So I look forward to seeing you for the next episode.